Flying in space has been a dream of mine ever since I can remember. Maybe it's your dream as well. But that dream seems to have taken a little longer to fulfill than I originally hoped. In 2011, literally on the eve of the final space shuttle launch, I gave a lecture to commemorate the first 50 years of manned spaceflight, to celebrate the achievements, and to examine why that dream seems to have stalled. That lecture, Manned Spaceflight as it has been and as it ought to be, is now available at the Ayn Rand Institute's e-store for just 99 cents. The lecture summarizes NASA's achievements and failures over the preceding 50 years. It examines what went wrong at NASA and why, and then concludes with some of my views for the future of totally privatized manned spaceflight. Now, I gave this talk in Florida at Ocon 2011, and I'm happy to say a lot has happened in the realm of private spaceflight since then, so some of my observations towards the end are already a little outdated, but for just 99 cents, it still might interest you. Here are some of my favourite moments. Now, however, in 2011, on the 50th anniversary of man's first flights into the final frontier, NASA is retiring its space shuttles. The final flight is scheduled for tomorrow, July the 8th. After the shuttle Atlantis completes its mission, America's space, manned space program will effectively be dead because NASA will have no means of launching men into orbit. Instead, we will pay Russia, American taxpayer dollars, to send our remaining as astronauts to a communal space station on rockets which were designed five decades ago in a then hostile enemy country. I have to ask, quite literally, what on earth has gone wrong? What has happened to the great inspirational dream of man's venture into the stars? What do we have to show for 50 years of manned spaceflight? And what should be done in the future? That is my subject tonight, manned spaceflight as it has been and as it ought to be. Apollo 11, to quote Miss Rand again, was a spectacular proof of the power of science and rationality. For the eight years from 1961 to 1969, the scientists, engineers, and astronauts at NASA labored and innovated. They solved problems, invented solutions and protocols and tested them. With foresight and planning, their minds took man and mankind further than we had ever been before. Skylab was a jobs program, space welfare, that used leftover bits and pieces from the Apollo technology and it was another dead end. The space shuttle's function, of course, was to be a reusable launch vehicle that was supposed to provide us permanent access to space. NASA's original schedule was to launch 24 missions a year. It has averaged fewer than four and a half. Can you see the pattern yet? Every major NASA, NASA initiative in manned spaceflight has turned into a dead end. And so we have three floors in our space program. There is a fourth floor, one that is more widespread. That floor is the breach in people's minds between capitalism's practicality and its morality. Fundamentally, the exploration of space needs to be completely privatized. Private individuals and corporations are the only people who should be undertaking the risks of space flight and reaping their rewards. NASA should be completely defunded and dissolved. I have no doubt that flying in space would be fun, an enormous amount of fun. And I am more than willing to pay for that privilege. And it is a dreadful irony that the first paying space tourist, Dennis Tito, paid Russia to take him into space. NASA wouldn't have him. The company closest to reaching orbit with man-capable spacecraft is SpaceX, created by PayPal co-founder Elon Musk. In December 2010, just seven months ago, its Dragon space capsule became the first ever private space capsule to reach and return from orbit. Back in 2004, after Spaceship One's maiden flight, 
Astronaut Mike Melville stood atop the vehicle with his hands raised victoriously. In the crowd, he saw someone holding up a sign. The sign read, Spaceship One, Government Zero. <laughs> My second and final closing observation is to preempt anyone who might be wondering if I'm proposing that since the technology is developing so quickly in private hands, maybe all the objectivists should all just invest our money and resources in manned spaceflight in order to establish some free rational society out there somewhere in the solar system. All the preconditions for such a venture, for example, the full and absolute recognition of individual property rights, have to be established on Earth before they'll be recognised anywhere else. And secondly, and far more importantly, why should we, the rational people, have to abandon the Earth when we're the only ones who actually know how to live here? <laughs> if you want to see space exploration develop properly, please remember that we have values we need to fight for, to defend, and to build upon here on Earth first. Only by doing this will we be ready, truly ready, to launch ourselves once and for all, and for good, into the final frontier. Thank you. Well, there you are. If you're interested, just go to the science or history sections of the Ayn Rand Institute's e-store, or you can click on the link right here. See you in the final frontier. Mm -hmm.